What's going on guys? Big BB back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're gonna go full force, full detail, talking about the machine. Bride of Pinbot Virtual Pinball Machine. Get ready, I'm gonna talk your ear off. Pinbot? That's not the Bride of Pinbot? I know, it's Virtual Pinball. It's got over 350 tables on it. Go pick. <laughs> Let's take a look. Gophers! <laughs> Alright guys, you know Joe, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at, throw it up there, Vic underscore VP. Click the link tree down below, be sure to like, subscribe, also be sure to comment. It helps the algorithm apparently, and I do like reading your comments. Whether they are positive or they're negative, I always like to read them and I always like to answer back. So, come at me with that hate, I'm gonna fire right back at you and give your own taste your own medicine. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me on all the socials, you would see everything. Do it! Go, follow. <laughs> All right, before we get into the whole full detail video and everything, I do get this request a lot. People want to actually see the boot process on this, so why not film it real quick? Real quick, we're gonna come back here. I have one single power supply switch in the rear. Basically, the big deal when it comes to virtual pinball, we have to wait for all the screens to fully load. Really, we're talking about this right here, the LG. Me, personally, I don't press the power button until I see the no signal sign right there. As you can see, no signal in the front, right in the middle. I do have a PC power button dedicated just to turn on the PC and also to turn off the system. Let it do its thing. As you can see right now, I push the button, but Vic, what's happening? Just got to let it do its thing. Now, I have it set up where Popper is going to launch after 30 seconds of login. That's just the easiest way to do it. There's a couple of programs that are launching in the background. For example, one is Pinval, the other one is Dofflinks, and then you do have Pinup Popper. So again, right now, computer is loaded. As you can see, I'm not using any keyboard, I'm not using any mouse. It is always good to have a keyboard and mouse though handy, just in case you know if you want to update tables and all that, you do need a keyboard and mouse. I'm not a fan of the game board, the game pass out. As you can see, Dofflinks is starting. Pinval starts minimized. And then sure enough, pretty soon we are gonna have poppers. So again, I'm not a fan of the gamepad style mouse and keyboards. It gets kind of finicky. But as you can see, we are booted. Now before, when I was shooting this video, I had the volume low, very simple. We could hold the shift key, which in this pin and all my pins is extra ball, cause I don't really like to see the word shift on a button. If I hold the blue button, which is extra ball, my start raises global volume and my coin lowers global volume. I'm actually gonna keep that low because I don't wanna get hit with copyright. But as you can see, popper is loaded. All the time it takes one flipper press to get Dofflinks to activate. So as you can see, we have all the Dofflinks and all that, under cab glow and such. I do have the flipper knocker, uh, knocker, flipper solenoid disabled in popper only because it gets very annoying. When you start you know, hearing cuck, 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 it gets a little bit annoying. but. Very easy stuff. You can use your flippers is to go one by one on the game or the magnet stage will skip the letters. Again, as you can see right now, we are fully loaded and ready to game. No need to turn knobs and such. We do have our pin vol here, so I can raise it. And again, usually I do say I'm gonna lower it because it's loud. I do tell customers basically, once you get it in your house, you can go to the rear, adjust your knob as far as global volume. I always say, put it loud where it's like at 100%, it will make you want to lower it. This way your machine's never at 100%, usually maybe like 90 to about 80. But as far as like pinball, it's also kind of crazy. Um, I kind of noticed that pinball from like zero to like 20%, you could hear a drastic change. But then like from 20% to 100, it's like a very slight change. It's, it's just pinball, it is what it is. But as you can see, we are loaded. I didn't use any keyboard or mouse. What a beautiful thing. Now, as far as shutting down, I'm a big fan of exiting the program. You could shut down the system. Definitely don't press shut down in game because you might fuck up something. But basically, as you can see right now, I am in popper. If I push a button, I will re-engage popper. But if I shift exit, it will bring me back to the desktop. Once I'm on the desktop, I press my PC button and then it will shut down. I am a big person and you do have to do this. You do need to cut the power 
off to the entire cabinet. As you can see right now, the LG, the screen went to no signal. I would then come here and I would flip the switch. Now you could also put a smart switch to it, that's A-OK. -okay. Basically cut off power to the actual cabinet. Why, Vic, why? Basically the LG, I don't know about other TVs, but again, LG C3 OLED 42 inch, 120 hertz 4K screen in this. If you leave the TV alone, after like five minutes in no signal, the TV turns off. When it does turn off, if you try to power on and power off again, the TV will not automatically turn on as you see how I do it now. Worst case scenario, if that does happen, you could just grab the remote and press the power button. That is A-OK, -okay, but the big thing, just like how I just showed you right now, we want everything to power on on its own. And it's a very big deal, and I tell it to all my customers, you must wait for this no signal screen. Now you could turn on the PC. If you turn on the PC and screen one, for example, the LG is off, you're gonna have a bad time, screens will get mixed up. This will be screen one, whereas this is screen one. It will basically mess up a couple of things. It is a fairly easy thing to fix if that happens, but all in all, I always tell people to just go with this. Now, just a quick note, because again, the LG C3 OLED, it happens on mine, it even has on, it happens on the C2 OLED. It's a good thing that it does happen, but it happens. LG designed this thing, I guess, for like pixel refresh. Basically, if you power on the TV, it might give you this error message saying, hey, you know, we, we suggest that you do a pixel refresh. Turn off the screen now. If you turn it off now, we will do it in the background. It's five minutes long. Basically, your screen will be off. You're not gonna be able to power it on. It's doing this pixel refresh thing. I don't know what that means. Let it do its thing and then after five minutes come back. Usually like in my personal build, even on Project Canada, that's really where I experienced it because it was my first C3, C2 OLED. Usually you get that message after like a month or I guess it depends on how many hours. I don't know exactly. That's just what LG has built in. But in all honesty, it's a good thing to do. It's to make the screen last longer or whatever, but it's a good thing to do. Why not? And as you can see again, we just now powered off. Powered back on, we are back into popper, no mouse, no nothing. We are set and ready to play. Now, real quick, as we are talking about the LG, we're talking about the screen, we're talking about this OLED, please. Oh man, I, it's getting so old, it's like a broken record. You're gonna experience burning, Vic, there's gonna be burning, burning. If you actually look very carefully, and I've been, you know, with this specific screen, I have this on my Simpsons cab, my personal build, and I have it on this one here. Honestly, like, when you start, like, actually, playing it and looking at the like for me I'm like I'm you know if I'm updating tables I'm here sideways there is something I would probably say like about every 10 to 20 minutes I guess the screen is programmed to actually shift a hair almost like a, a pixel over I guess it's doing that to like avoid any like burn in but in all honesty you're not gonna get burning it's like stop it <laughs> My buddy Project Canada, he's had his pin for over a year. No complaints there. I, I, you know, okay, it might happen, but I feel like by the time that does happen, you're probably like, like the screen lasting is gonna be like, it would be time for an upgrade. Almost like how I started with a Samsung 60 Hertz and then went to my QNED 120 Hertz and then I went to an OLED. Uh, yeah, <laughs> technology always changes, but again, don't, don't let it, don't let that, that, that go crazy. I personally, on my pin, again, like I said, if I have any parties, if I have any friends over, I keep one game on. Me, personally, on my build, I do not run popper. Only because, like, I just like to keep it one game. I don't want somebody to come here and press the exit button. It is what it is. Um, I only run one game. So if you think about it, I have the same table on for, let's just say, about maybe six to seven hours. I power off, the next day I'm fine, I haven't seen burning. There you go, that's my only like thing that I could say about burning. I've kept tables on. And like I said, if you look very carefully at the screen, I feel like every 10 minutes it actually shifts like a pixel, whether it's up, down, left, or right, it does do that. Sometimes like my eyes, I'm like, is that my eye deceiving me? It's not a drastic thing where it's like, oh, what happened? It's, you're talking about one pixel shift. It's really not that bad. But again, I guess companies put that in to avoid burning. Don't let that ruin a screen. Again, what a beautiful screen. Again, I can't stress it enough. I, I went and I changed to a 
OLED because OLED is a thing of beauty. And again, the 120 hertz, it's, it's a must, you need it. <laughs> I always love my intro, but that's enough of the social media plug and all that. I'm really excited to finally go full force, full detail on this beautiful, I mean, again, uh, I might be, you know, what's the word? I don't know. I just, I love all the builds I do. And I mentioned it on the overview video, the word I was looking for is that I keep one-upping myself. I, I just love it. In all honesty, they're all like almost identical builds, but like seeing it with like different artwork is really like what catches your eye. And it's like, this is like a whole different, completely different build. In all honesty, this build right here is also almost identical to my personal The Simpsons Pinball Party. Um, my DMD screen is a little bit bigger, but in all honesty, it's it's kind of the same thing. It's just when you see it like in different artwork, um, it's like a whole different build. <laughs> I mean, again, all my builds I feel like are one of a kind. Um, you know, never really have yet to do duplicates, meaning like double artwork, uh, besides my first ever um, Simpsons Pinball Party where I actually had a customer that wanted the same artwork. So as far as a duplicate like that, that's what I mean. But it's just kind of crazy that like, I stand here and I'm like, this is just something I never built before. <laughs> it always, it always makes me feel uh, giddy inside. I think it's, I think it's a thing of beauty. Um, and every build gets like something a little bit different. Um, whether I learn from my past, maybe I do something a little bit differently. For example, like this one here, in all honesty, the wiring I did on this, it's, uh, it's way different than my first ever build. Um, I've definitely cleaned up my wiring ever since I did the Project Canada's Hogwarts and then also the Star Trek pin. Um, you know, sending these out to customers, it's very important to make sure like wiring is clean. In the event something happens, let's just say a customer says, hey Vic, I have a solenoid that's like out, how can you help me out? Wiring is pretty important, you don't want to send spaghetti. Again, if you've seen my first ever Simpsons pinball party, my personal one, that was a wiring net. That was like a mess. It was like a, a nest. It was a wiring mess. It was like a nest. Um, uh, I learned from it. And in all brutal honesty, this one right here, uh, I took it the extra step further. Uh, as far as like when I went to go crimp wires, I started using like these, um, the forks. Uh, basically like these special fork heads that they'll stay in the block. Um, also not to mention like you could put like three wires in one fork a lot of stuff a lot of stuff And I'm just happy that you know, I learned from myself, but Me doing all that. I'm not gonna say the word extra work to make it sound negative um, It's just me doing that taking those extra steps to adding the forks and everything It adds a little bit of time. I don't mind adding the time. That's why I don't feel like I'm ever like constraint um, to time Yes, I do have a wait list Yes, people have been on this waitlist for a while. I am a one-man army. I am a one-man show. Um, and my main thing is to give you a very high-quality product. I don't rush things. I get a lot of people that go, hey, Vic, man, I'm on your waitlist. Like, when can we start? When will I need this by, like, next week? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't work that way. Um, this customer, we're going to talk about the customer himself. Again, we're going to go full. I'm already talking. We'll go full force, full detail. Um... Really not too much full force, full detail to talk about because the customer is luckily a brother of a very close friend of ours uh, as far as the four amigos, or I should say four musketeers uh, added from the three amigos went to four musketeers. So it's pretty cool. But again, not just saying that, you know, uh, it's a friend of mine and I'm able to relax a little bit. I don't really work that way. Um, every build I do, whether it be a family member's or a friend of mine's or a regular customer that I don't even know, uh, my objective is to give a top high quality product. Um, I'm not the type where I'm gonna say, hey, you're my friend, I'm just gonna, you know, I'll just quickly wire this, it'll take me a day, I don't, I don't work that way. And no, friends, family do not get discounts. Don't ask me, nobody gets discounts, nobody. <laughs> Now this is awesome, I love this like segue, I wasn't planning this. I'm also working on myself. I have to remember to take a pause. <laughs> I have to like pause and then you know, if I have to edit something, I, I have that quick pause. I, as you can see, I kind of go on a ramble, but I just touched up on a very specific thing that this is going out to a friend. So again, I mentioned it in the overview video. This is going out to Brad D, one of the four musketeers. It's going out to his identical twin brother named Chad, Chad D. 
Um, I never really met Chad. I never fully spoken to Chad, but Chad reached out to me. He goes, hey, Vic man, I'm looking for a virtual pinball machine. Brad was telling me about what you do. He also even reached out to Joel, I understood. And uh, all in all, uh, we're at this point. Um, you know, I don't want to say that, oh, I never do that. Oh, I'm better than somebody. I don't do that. I basically tell you, hey, this is what I have to offer. And if you like it, we continue. If not, more than happy, you can go pick another person. It's A-OK. -okay. It doesn't hurt my feelings. We're all good and dandy. But the reason I'm really talking about this, this is a very touchy subject, especially in the virtual pinball community. In this world, there are a lot of communities, whether it's arcade builders, virtual pinball community. Um, without these communities, we probably wouldn't reach the level that it is here now. Now, in all brutal honesty, and I said this in many of my videos, I build virtual pinball machines. My goal is to build the actual cabinet. As far as software, meaning game-wise, I don't do that. I don't deal with that. Customers deal with that. Oh, but Vic, you show it off. Like, look, this the customer's not going to get this. No, customers do not get this. You have to do the work as far as popper media, as far as downloading backglasses, as far as getting FX2, FX3, and such. Me, personally, I put my files on this. I make sure everything works and then it gets sucked right out. I only leave popper in and then I kind of just remove the media minus like the Leprechaun King because that's stock with popper. Again, I'm making this a big deal. Some people go, oh man, you lost the sale, Vic. That's just how it is. It's very important that I want to make sure that the virtual pinball community understands that I do not sell tables preloaded. It is a huge deal it's a disrespect to the authors apparently i learned this from way back virtual pinball has been here for quite a while and again in my early videos i used to get people that go oh you're, you shouldn't be doing this that's not allowed we don't and i said no i don't sell it with the tables i am just building the cabinet now luckily chad d has been in the virtual pinball community he knows the ins and outs he knows what to do and such he even has his own like fx3 a uh, PC game and I even think he also has um, M FXM is that a thing or just regular FX I haven't even dabbled into that because I don't even understand how that works I think I have to pay by the credit I don't know I don't even play FX2 and FX3 on my machine it's a whole different style of like game I would rather stick with VPX so right now the objective as you can see right now this is here I shot the promo videos I'm shooting you this video this way you can see visually what the end result could be when you put in the work, again, I just want to make this part very clear. I don't give a shit about the outcome of it. I am right now looking at the camera. You hear it from my mouth to your ears. I do not sell these tables with ROMs. I do not sell my pinball machines with games included. Vic, what are you getting paid for? I get paid for this. The actual physical stuff, the heart of the system, the wiring and such. Direct output, so the DOF and everything, everything is set up. You as a customer, I asked Chad D, I said, hey man, you have to make a Gmail account. This way I can make you a login for VP Universe, VP Forums, the DOF config tool. This way he has his own DOF config. If he ever wants to change anything, he has his own login. It doesn't go through me. I just want to make sure I'm verbally saying that. Yes, that is the big thing with this community, especially when it comes to virtual pinball. Um, you know, you don't really want to disrespect the VPIN community, especially because... I play my virtual pinball machine. My V-Pin, it's gone through so many phases and so many changes, I am addicted to pinball. Uh, it, it is what it is. And the last community I would wanna frown upon or piss off would be virtual pinball. But again, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing about communities and this and yada, yada, yada. I just have to put that disclaimer in there because ain't nobody gonna come after me. <laughs> Now, also, it's a very good point that I put that in because, you know, I do get the emails. I see everybody's emails. I get all, I reply to everybody. I, I always do it because it goes right to me. I don't have a secretary working for me. I'm the type of person where, you know, if I get an email at 12 a.m. and I'm up and I see it, I'm the type that I kind of reply fairly quickly. Um, I don't really have work hours. Just I reply whenever I can, even if it's on a Sunday and I look at my phone real quick, I reply. Really what I'm getting at is basically I get requests for this. Hey Vic, I want a VPIN, man. I see your stuff. I love it. I think it's great. People love these things. People, they kind of figure it as a real pinball machine. Meaning, hey Vic, man, you, you, it looks like this is so awesome. It looks like I could just plug it in and like go. 
is it that easy? Do I ever have to like maintain anything? Do I have, and that's where like I tell them like, you know, this then if you're really looking very carefully, you're not really looking carefully enough. Same thing when it comes to arcade builds. Um, you know, I want to add a game, Vic. Is it like an easy one, two, three thing? No, it is not. It is not. <laughs> if you are looking for something that is just very simple, plug it in, play it. I got a five-year-old kiddo. I want to make sure they don't mess it up. I always say in my past videos, you do not want a PC-based system. If you have that mentality, stick with a Pandora box. No, there is no virtual pinball Pandora box. If, again, you have that mentality of, hey, Vic, I got a kiddo. I just want to plug it in. I don't want to where if I'm at work, they're going to ask me, how does it work? Go get an arcade one up. Go get it at games. That's how they work. That is how it's designed. And go do that. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is that all of this is work. Emulation is work. It is never simple. And it is never plug and play. It's just, it never is. I've been saying this. I've been doing this. I got to really figure out the exact date. But you're talking over 13 years, maybe even more. Um, I've been doing this for quite a while. It is never plug and play. Nothing is plug and play. Even this right here, this actual system here, I actually went and I did the upgrade for VPX 10.8. I even did the upgrade for Popper, but I did it on this actual physical machine. Now I'm gonna take the image here and I'm gonna bring it to my PC, but I'm gonna be honest, it's not gonna be a simple copy and paste over. I have a couple of things such as like Alt Launcher and Alt Emulator. Tables now with 10.8, you have to like change up flasher numbers. This way the table runs smooth. See right now, you're probably like, what are you talking about, Vic? What? I don't, that, that's why you have to get ready and prepare yourself because this, this is work. <laughs> this is, this is not just a simple like plug it in. If you want something simple, go get a PS5 and go get a disc game. That's simple. This is a whole different beast. Again, I'm talking about emulation. Virtual pinball on itself is also a whole different beast compared to like RK build. It's everything's different. Emulation though is basically what I'm trying to get at is um, you have to prepare yourself for work. I don't care who you are. I don't care what builder you are. Uh, I built the best one and it's plug and play and all you got to do is push. No, fuck you. It's not that easy. Oh yeah, it is Vic baddest error. You could just assign your, your controls. You just said it. You have to assign controls. And I'm on like forums, I'm on Facebook groups. Look, for example, the Like on Lunatics, they have a Sindin build. And people can't even understand or grasp the idea of how do I configure my guns. They're not even setting up games. They need help configuring guns. Again, I'm not making fun of somebody. It's just there is work. And if you're not willing to put the time and the effort in and to learn, this is not for you. <laughs> this, this, this is not for you. <laughs> well, I got that off my chest. <laughs> I didn't want to. I'm trying. I'm really trying hard. Like, especially when I make these videos, I try not to be like negative. Um, it's just again, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've seen, I've seen the emails. I've seen the requests and all that. The biggest thing again is that I really hate it when somebody is trying to sell you something and claim that it's oh, it's easy. And again, look at the people that are building these cabinets and they build beautiful cabinets. I'm not knocking it. The cabinet itself is beautiful, but when it comes time for, hey, there's like a new update to this table, like they won't help me. That's where you have to learn. You just have to learn. Oh, but I'm afraid I'm going to mess up the system. You have to learn it. That, that's the only way. And then it goes back to the day old, old age, old saying where like, well, if you built the system yourself, you would know the ins and out of it. So you wouldn't really be able to mess it up, right? That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I, again, I really wanted to start this off just by that disclaimer, um, but then it went that way. It went right. But enough of that. Let's talk about this beautiful, what a thing of beauty, man. The machine Bride of Pinbot. I'll be brutally honest, I never played the game. I have it. I have it on my cab. I never played it. It's almost like I, I and I have to stop myself from thinking this way, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's a solid, I believe it's a solid state game. Don't shoot me in the comments, but, um, I believe it's a solid state game. And usually those games that have like this kind of DMD style with like the alphanumeric, that's what it would be, right? Alphanumeric, um, kind of DMD style. I kind of like never looked at it. 
I'm like, I'm not into that. I'm, I'm into like the newer Sterns. I have my JJPs. I'm into like the DMD era games. Like I kind of like it where like in Sopranos, you're hitting the poppers and you see like somebody getting beaten up. Or like in, uh, I guess like uh, in WF Royal Rumble, uh, you know, you see the wrestlers and stuff on the screen. It's a different thing. So I have like this thing where I'm like, I'm not going to, that game looks old. But I'll be brutally honest. The Bride of Pinbot? The mechs? The whole face change mech? That is a thing of beauty. <laughs> and then honestly, it kind of brings you back where like, playing an older style game like that, it goes to show you that you don't need like these screens and you don't need these videos and you don't, it's something as simple as that. Basically for me, the Bride of Pinbot, my goal, and again, I do have a local arcade that actually has a Bride of Pinbot. The owner, I was playing it, the owner walked past me and he's like, you know, how you, how you like in Bride of Pinbot? And at first I was like, I have to get used to it. So he goes, did you, are you in the billionaires club? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, what he goes, yeah, there's a billionaires club. There's a separate set of high scores for billionaires. Are you in that club? And I'm like, well, I guess now I got to play it to be in this club. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It's I'm trying to get my name into the billionaires club basically. So yes, again, my local arcade does have a Bride of Pinbot. I was really excited. Again, I'll probably try to post a snippet of the TikTok. I hope I have it on TikTok. Chalk it up, another one on the board. I am getting Pinball Palm, look at that. The Bride of Pinbots. Not on this game, but before, I do have high score number three. Again, a great day for Pinball. You told me, Vic, did you get the Billionaire's Club? I said, no, I did not, but I think it's number four. Oh, this is Billionaire's Club. Oh, what did I get then? I got a high score of something. Grand Champion 65 Bill is the owner. I guess I want high scores. So number three should be Vic. There you go, 40 mil. At least I got my name on the board. Basically, as you can see in the snippet there, um, I was excited, like, you know, when I see the cabinet artwork, I'm like, yes, this is exactly, you know, how this V-pin came out. Again, when a customer specifically asks for a specific artwork, so for example, Chad wanted a Bride of Pin by, it's very important that you get the artwork it's like a big deal because like if you didn't get it then you kind of missed an important thing because he wanted the bride of pinbot now also to my surprise the bride of pinbot apparently has two different cabinet artwork styles uh one is purple as you can see here and i think the other one is like a silver or a black i don't know uh but basically i was able to see like oh there's a, there's a difference there's, there's two different things um again though if you haven't played the bride of pinbot play it it is, it's a cool, it's a very cool, very interesting style of game. Um, it's different. It's just different when you see the mechs and you see the shots and then you see the ball lock. It's very, it's cool. Go, go check it out. And then also, if you don't know, I do have the QR codes. That stays on the machines. I do have my QR codes here. So anybody that launches the table, this customer will have the QR code available. So while you're playing, my QR code pops up. You could scan it, upload your high score, and then join my little global high score trend. I made a video on it uh, quite a while back, and it's pretty cool to see that people post their high scores. Me, personally, I have to play more Bride of Pinbot just to get my name on the board. <laughs> but I was happy that, and as you can see in the snippet there, um, on a real arcade Bride of Pinbot, I did get my initials uh, in the regular high score, but I did not get the Billionaires Club, so... I'm gonna have to go back and work on that. <laughs> Might as well segue into the artwork because we are talking about artwork. Man, again, big shout out, I mentioned to him in the overview video. This is Ignacio's artwork known as Gaston Designs on Instagram. Very cool dude, I always like it when people message me. Um, you know, whether it be friendly messages or you know somebody that's like a business opportunity. Um, I always like seeing it. So again, shout out to Ignacio. Ignacio hit me up a while back. I'll probably say at least maybe he's been following me for maybe about two years now. Um, you know, he basically said to me, hey, big man, I'm a graphic artist. If you need artwork, let me know. And you know, me personally, I know how it is. That doesn't mean like, let me know. I'll give you something for free. It never works that way. And I would never want anything for free. I'm just, I got this thing where I don't, I don't like it. I wouldn't work for free. I would not expect somebody else to work for free. Um, Ignacio hit me up and I did say to myself, I was like, you know what, in 2024, I'm going to now have a real graphic designer, uh, involved. Now, don't get me wrong. 
I could still do the artwork and I'll still do the artwork. If we have to keep the price low, I'll do it. But Ignacio, you have to pay. You have to pay for his thing. In this scenario, he already had the artwork. So I paid a fee for basically just the artwork. As far as something like custom made, I don't even know what he's going to charge me. But if we're talking about something where it's like, you know, how a customer would reach out to me and they'd be like, like I said before, I was supposed to make a, a Marvel themed cabinet. What the fuck does that even mean? I don't know. I don't know. But basically, like, you know, I would come up with an idea. You as a customer go, Vic, man, no, I wanted like Incredible Hulk themed. Okay. Then I got to, I got to sit and make a revision. Now, when you're talking about a graphic designer, something that does this for a living, I would assume that revisions would probably cost, um, or maybe they give you a set amount of revisions that you could do. That's what I think. In this situation here, it was a one simple fee and no revisions really. Um, the only thing that we had to adjust and play with was the DMD panel. That was it. And in all real honesty, uh, he sent me, he actually sent me two because I wasn't sure about this right here. I wasn't sure if I wanted this, the machine logo. So honestly, it's just one uh, PNG file. So he sent me one image without it and then another one with it. And in all honesty, it was just a, a PNG file that was on and off. And you might be like, what the fuck is that? I don't know what a PNG, that, that's just Photoshop talk here. But basically what I'm trying to get at is that it was just, it's a one and done kind of thing. He already has artwork there. Um, he had both options of this purple or the other black or silver. Uh, Chad knew he wanted purple. I got the files. I sent it to Chad. I said, Chad, what do you think? He goes, yep, that is the purple that I want. Awesome. Good to go. Now, the big thing we have to keep in mind is that everything, especially on my end, everything is custom made. I'm not following. I mean, I followed a template, but then get, things get modified. So like, for example, my back box, it's going to be different size compared to a real back box. For example, like a JJP and all that, but it's got the same characteristics. It's big on the top, but then it's small on the sides. It's kind of like a triangular shape. Back boxes are back boxes, but this cabinet is not built according to a Williams style cabinet. What am I getting at? Basically, Gaston sent me a file, which as you can see, let's talk about the side art. Let's talk about this panel right here. He sent me a file. As you can see, we have the girl laid back, just like a real Bride of Pinbot purple edition or purple version. Now, with me, I, I'm very picky and I, I'm not just, I'm not the type that's going to like, oh, I got this file, go and like print. Like, I, don't, I don't really work that way. Um, I did send Gaston my template, meaning like the outline, just like as if I was going to make the artwork, I sent him my template. Basically, he just kind of, took the artwork that was what he was in. i just needed the bride of pivot so he took the real original artwork and then just put it over my template what am i getting at basically like it didn't fill up everything so if we kind of look very carefully like for example on the side art here you can see like these little like galaxy dots basically i had to go in and adjust and fill in more dots because let's just say for example here like this top here it was just plain purple and I said that to Chad and I said, hey, here's one version, but I'm the type where, again, I have to get hands on. That's just how I am. It's not a bad thing. I just, every time I build, I'm like, I envision it as if it was in my house, if it's going to be my cabinet. So I took the extra time and I said, hey, Chad, this is the designers and then this is mine. And basically I went and I, I don't like empty areas. I, I hate empty areas. So I went and I added more galaxies, but it's not just that. That I added. The big thing I did have to, it was a must. I had to. We're gonna look right here by the foot. I might have to move the camera over just so you could see it. Now, this right here, I'm proud of myself because I noticed it and I was like, I have to fix it. Take a look right here. This is what I want you guys to see right here. This kind of sunburst thing with her foot. What number one great placement because the foot tip is right at the flipper button. What a thing of beauty. But basically, what I'm getting at is that the original cabinet design, this like this was really kind of it's like angled that way so it's like a slice because honestly it's supposed to line up like with the edge and um like i said before my cabinets are not designed like a williams cabinet so i have to modify the artwork basically i had to take probably i would say a good maybe 30 minutes to 45 minutes i would have to take i took like this burst here and then i had to mirror it there basically i had to make it bigger without changing you know her figure and all that what i'm trying to get at basically is that 
Artwork is artwork. A lot of stuff custom made. Nothing really is a simple, just, you know, printed and called a day. Uh, and the last thing probably to know is that I do get hands on. <laughs> I always get hands on. So I'm really happy with how this came out though. Cause now imagine if like this was just cut here, it would look like, like what the fuck happened? Like you, you, did you make the cabinet too big? Details, 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 people, everything in the details. Now in all honesty, the front panel here, I think this looks awesome. Now the big thing, if you could see with all my builds so far, I have yet to have somebody request a coin door. I could do it. Not to mention we have Illinois pin soon coming up. That already has a coin door cut out. But basically with Ignacio Gaston, his artwork file, it's a big gap here. It was just purple here because it's meant for a coin door. But like the heart here and the rocket was already here. There was nothing here besides I did ask him to put like the machine. So he did put that file there. And then we have like the, the moon or whatever the planets on the right here. But again, because it's a coin door, he doesn't have artwork for this. So, you know, when I look at the template on Photoshop, I'm like, this is just too bare. It's too purple. I, I'm not a fan of it. It makes it look like, you know, I, I didn't want to leave it alone. So same thing. I sent Chad one image of just the purple. And then I had to scour the internet for this amazing. This is so sick. Isn't this beautiful? I think this is awesome. I found this image of the bride. It is, it's insane. Um, but it wasn't easy to accomplish this image, meaning I had to actually set this image to a kind of like a filter on Photoshop, almost like opacity. Um, I forgot what I used, like light burn or something like that. This was originally like a black background. But as you can see, like we have like the, the bursts here and all that. And if I was gonna erase the black, it would just be a hot mess. So basically using some Photoshop skill that I know, I was able to light burn it to the purple and I think it looks awesome. The other challenge though, cause I said the original background was black, was to keep this kind of round circle here. That was a challenge. But the biggest thing is that it looks, look at how awesome that, I think it, it completes it. She's just. Number one, she's like throwing a ball up. There's an actual pinball right here. But she's also holding, levitating three other balls. <laughs> it is a thing of beauty. I think it honestly makes the machine. It's it's awesome. I think I think it's gorgeous. Now, real quick, we take a look at like the, the back box itself. Beautiful. Uh, again, one-to-one -one on that. I didn't really change too much as far as the back box. Aside from adding more of the galaxy little dots um again like i said i just don't like empty spaces because it looks like it's like you're tr you didn't accomplish what it like it uh, you know what i mean i wasn't a fan of like the the emptiness now as far as the dmd though i'm very very happy dmds um i mean again i i'm gonna pat myself i love how this is to me the stern style dmd i love the way this looks. It looks so clean, it looks professional, I'm gonna say that about myself. It looks amazing, but when it comes to artwork for this, it is difficult. It's difficult to make sure that like we have everything in line, like you know, the main thing that was the, that was the scary part for me. For me, when I order my artwork, meaning the vinyl, uh, I only have one shot. <laughs> I don't order two of each one or else I'm gonna have to double the price. I only have one shot for it. So when I was applying the vinyl for this DMD panel, man, the main focus was this right here. I needed to make sure that that machine not only is centered here, but it's centered here. Was a challenge, but honestly, it is a thing of beauty. And I'm really happy, for example, you can see here the left side here. You can see it, right? Yes, you see the heart. We have this actual spacecraft here. You could actually see the spacecraft. Yes, the heart got a little uh, heartbroken, but that's just kind of basic vinyl. It looks cool. I, I think it looks awesome. But same thing when I got the DMD panel, you know, adding these little dots, it's just, I wanted to make sure, because now imagine if this was just all purple. The original, the original design was just all purple, and I'm like, it's too empty. Um, throw this galaxies in. And again, after, out of all this, the customer has to approve it. So I gave Chad both the regular version and then my modified one. And he goes, Vic, I like it, proceed. And all brutalized though, the one thing that people don't see is up the applying of the graphics. Um, I mentioned in the overview also, I'm gonna chime in on this. Um, keep in mind, Ignacio Gaston 
is the artist. He's the one that supplied me the artwork file, but he does not supply the print. Not to mention he's overseas. So I'm not gonna expect him to supply the print because I can imagine the cost of printing and then shipping it overseas. So there's really three people involved. There's Gaston, the designer. I still use my buddy Gulf Coast decals, um, Justin. He's the one that prints my vinyl. And then there's me that has to apply the vinyl. So awesome, awesome stuff. Also, I forgot to mention, because we're talking about it, um, Chad requested matte finish we did not do glossy finish on this he wanted it to be as close as possible to the real williams cabinet williams cabinet does not have a glossy shiny finish it does have a matte also honestly i think it was a great thing that we did that because it really i think that's why i love this cabinet it's an older cabinet older style artwork and again that matte finish it's it's beautiful it probably would have looked different if we did the glossy, but I'm very happy we didn't. <laughs> now, real quick, I was mentioning about applying the vinyl. Applying like vinyl to the sides isn't that difficult. It's a pain, don't, don't get me wrong. One panel, especially when it comes to like sides, it'll probably take me about 45 minutes to lay. Back box probably takes me about 20 to 30 minutes a side. It takes me all day to do vinyl, but the biggest bitch is the DMD. You don't understand. These three big gaping holes, it makes vinyl work difficult. Because essentially when I lay that vinyl, and I do it in a way where basically I lay it, I gotta measure it, it's very, I mean again, that's, that right there is proof right here how important and calculated vinyl must be laid. Um, basically once I start applying it, and you know, pushing it down, once you get to like here, and there's no like um there's nothing that this vinyl here attaches to obviously i don't have the screens there because it's going to stick to the green the actual vinyls begins to you know dip in and then that kind of fucks up the whole measurement towards the bottom it is dmds is probably the worst thing i hate doing vinyl for but the end result it's uh satisfying it's it's a thing of beauty once you lay it and uh yeah that's my little story as far as artwork <laughs> Now, like I mentioned before in my overview video, the only thing that's right now missing, and again, Chad is coming tomorrow uh, to pick this thing up. I, it's not that it's missing. The red legs are not going to stay on this cabinet, but honestly, when Chad comes, um, I'm gonna ask him, does he wanna keep the red legs? Or I do have his chrome legs that he specifically requested. So what, oh, we have Baywatch on the screen. <laughs> um, that's distracting, <laughs> but the red lights might not stay. And also right now I'm still waiting for the plunger here. So it's honestly pretty cool because like the game is like, you're trying to bring her back to life and it's like red. Um, I've seen somebody actually make a custom heart shaped uh, plunger rod. So it's pretty cool to see the red, but yes, the legs are not supposed to be red. Again, when he picks it up, if he wants to keep the red, cool. That's A-OK -okay with me. Uh, these are just my extra legs that I have whenever I'm working on it. That's also why they're wrapped. <laughs> so many people see the wrapped legs. Yes, it's wrapped in like that greenish um, like plastic from Home Depot. I wrap my legs because again, there's dust and everything. And when I'm cutting wood and I leave it on the side, I don't want it to scratch. They're beautiful red, like Mario red. And uh, that's my protection. <laughs> that's how I protect it. So no, it won't have this green hue to it. Um, again, my shooter rod here, in all honesty, like I said, if you did watch my past videos, you would have heard why I have these red legs. It was because of that Marvel cabinet that fell through. And like I said, Marvel, red, red is Marvel. I went with red legs and I went also with the red shooter rod. Now also though, in all brutal honesty, um, this shooter rod is actually broken. Meaning it's cracked. The edge of it is uh, is actually cracked. Um, I think that happened probably in the workshop. That's why now, like, I have that shooter rod. I have that actual rod as backup. Slash, when I'm building a cabinet, I don't really put the actual hardware out that the customer's gonna get. Prime example: chrome legs and the shooter rod. We have a new shooter rod coming in for Chad. Uh, pretty cool. It's a purple and silver. I showed a picture of it. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for it. It's cool. Last thing real quick we'll talk about as far as like little details. Uh, again, shout out Eric Big E Productions, man. That dude, he always um, amazes me. And I'm always happy to hear when Eric messages me. He goes, hey Vic, man, 
Somebody saw your video and I got another order for custom rails. I'm like, yes, dude, do it. This is what, and he's a, he's a metal dude. He works with metal. Metal is like in his blood. Um, so it's awesome. Again, with this one here, just like my Simpsons bin, uh, pin, we did go with the brushed aluminum. Chrome, he could do, from my understanding, he could do it. But um, it is going to be a costly thing and it's also a timely thing. Uh, chrome is chrome. Um, yeah. He's not the type that he will actually make it out of chrome. He's not going to like put a vinyl wrap over it. Again, I don't know metal like that, but he said like, Vic, if you want chrome, like we really use chrome. Like, I don't even know if that's like a type of metal or if that's like a way to fit it. I don't know. You're asking the wrong dude, but he could do chrome. But in all honesty, this kind of brushed aluminum look, I would call it brushed silver. I think it looks awesome. I think it looks great. Uh, lo I love it on my pin. And I know for a fact that and that's what I'm hoping for when Chad brings it home and puts it up. Once he puts the chrome legs on it, it's going to be like, boah. <laughs> it's going to be insane. Because, again, right now you see red legs and then this brushed aluminum trim. And it's like, Vic, what happened? Again, I mentioned it on the overview. I was even going to look at possibly purple with sparkles. But it probably would have been too much purple. And uh, sometimes when you go too much purple, it's too much purple. <laughs> One more person I have to give a big shout out to and a big thank you to VD Vidal. Awesome dude, he's a big time follower of mine. He's commented so many times on my videos and he always reaches out to me on Instagram. Uh, it's always great. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I believe he was the one that you know messaged me a while back and he's like, you inspired me to build my virtual pinball machine. So big shout out to VD Vidal. You'll see him on, honestly, a lot of the comment section down below. Um, and he also joins like our live streams and he's always in the chat. Vidal reached out to me one day and he was like, hey, big man, I see the way you're doing your analog plungers. I use mine like with a pot, it's a potentiometer, and I kind of have it ghetto rigged using an L bracket from Home Depot and a piece of wood and some zip ties. He reached out to me and goes, hey, big man, I can actually 3D print a pot holder for you that mounts, right? Like it actually attaches and mounts to the actual plunger assembly. And I'm like, whoa. You could do that? That's pretty cool. And he goes, yeah, Vic, I'm going to send you not one, but he actually sent me two of them. Uh, so forever grateful for that. I will reach out to him to find out exactly how you could reach out to him. Um, again, I use, I believe it's 100M pots, potentiometers for my pins. They're kind of long and he has the actual holder for it. Um, awesome. I did mention him. I said, oh, I'm building Brad D's brother's V pin. So I said, I'll put one in his. And this one, he said, you know, for you, Vic. Uh, so I will be putting that in. Look at that. That is awesome. It is 3D printed. It is a thing of beauty. And it's a genius print. You basically put the pot here and he gives you this extra piece. Again, I don't want to, because he actually even gave me the screws. Like, he, again, shout out to Vidal. You really, you really blew my mind. He's even got two small screws that will hold the pot in place. But look at that. It's a little clip. The clip has a slit that the potentiometer actually sits in, like the actual like slider fader thing. And that's it. This wraps around your actual plunger rod and away you go. And I'm like, wow, dude, this is amazing. So again, shout out to him. Honestly, it's a very big, um, it's, I would say it's a big piece to virtual pinball. Again, getting that analog plunger and also the um, KL25Z for your nudge. It's a thing of beauty. Mentioning real quick, the nudge, very important. Not many people know it or know the secret to it. When you do have a shaker motor, you want to actually mount your KL25Z board to a, what I use, a actual drone vibration plate. I have all my cabinets, my cabinet, Project Canada's, this cabinet here, for example. The KL25Z board is not hard mounted to the wood that's like the base of the cabinet. No, no, no. It is actually on a vibration plate. It's actually kind of cool. It's got like four corners with sponges on a plate the plate is hard mounted the four sponges levitate to another plate and then the kl25z board i have bolted to that plate basically if the shaker is going off your ball will slightly nudge around just like in real life but it won't give you the tilt or the danger danger uh effect side effects um so it's pretty cool so if you didn't know that yes if you do have a kl25z board be sure to mount them on a anti-vibration plate or a drone plate. Um, going back to Cleveland, I, I I believe I have a pin one board 
Um, I'm hoping that there is an accelerometer in that. I don't know exactly yet. Again, like I said, I'm very excited. This one is going to go out tomorrow, and then I could finally get full hands-on with the Illinois cabinet. This cabinet right now has been gutted. I've removed everything out of this cabinet. Everything is gone. Now we're going to get ready to put everything back in nice and clean. That cabinet, though, is also getting a new computer in it. So, yeah. Now let's talk about some like basic stuff. I feel kind of stupid and bad that on the um, actual overview video, I forgot to mention that this does have surround sound force feedback on it. Um, again, it's got your basics. So I personally still run my same smart board. It's a 16 channel same smart board with the LED Wiz. That's what I always run my systems on. Uh, I just cannot multitask and think about alphabets at the same time. So we need the machine, we're gonna go to T. Um, again, it's got it's got your whole 10 solenoids. I do have my RGB flashers, which again, in this situation, I actually went a little bit different than what I normally do. Um, normally, I use police flashers as RGB. And in this situation, I'll probably actually try to pull it up. I actually found automotive lights. It's still automotive lights. It's 12 volt LEDs, but they're basically like a solid blue, a solid red, and a solid green. But I still kept my police flashers in the speaker pattern. Also, I do have my strobes. This does have a shaker motor in it. It's a real stern shaker motor, Spike 2, I believe, um, with the dial in the rear. So in case it's too crazy and too chaotic, we do have that in the rear. And obviously you have like your underglow, so RGB underglow. That also goes to the Magna flippers. So any color that's the underglow, I have that set to the Magna saves. And all honestly, when it comes to like DOF, uh, setting it to like magnet save, magna save, there's not much colors on table. So I think it's easier to just set it to the underglow. So that's that, but the flippers are set to RGB flippers as far as DOF config tool in that. And then again, you do have your addressable LEDs. Addressable LEDs, it's taking the world by storm. And I think it's great. I got basically coast to coast, edge to edge LED matrices. Um, so I have basically, it's the one big LED matrix and then two squares. So one square and one square. I believe the up here alone is like 350. I might be wrong. I have it written somewhere. But you do have the LED matrix panel. Then you do have the side rails. Then we have the speakers there. So all in all, it's pretty cool. We'll put some coins in. Um, I could raise the volume. Like I said, using pinball. Analog plunger, that is a big deal. Again, you could lightly pull, you could do a full set pull. And again, we do have these solenoids on 10 solenoids. I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> and again, the KL25Z board to really get you in the game, nudging, tilting, it changed the game. It is a must. If you're gonna do virtual pinball, you do need that accelerometer for that nudge feeling. Now this is the big thing, when it comes to like tables, and this again is like when you have to learn, you gotta learn your tables. Um, you know, some people might be looking at this and being like, Vic, the table's a little bit too dark. You can always go into settings and adjust like the day and night. Honestly, me personally, and I feel like the same thing for Chad, my lighting in here is bright. Extra ball, yes. My lighting in here is bright. So it will kind of look dark, but if I turn the lights off, it looks like, it looks, it looks beautiful. <laughs> ah. And then again, like I said surround sound feedback. You got the two um, exciters in the front and two exciters in the rear. I purposely have them very close to the flipper, this way you could feel that ball roll. We have extra ball. Now, also, if you know my build, I have two switches in the rear. If you want to do some nighttime gaming. I can hit the bottom switch. I lost the ball, obviously. But basically now my solenoids are disabled. Everything else works. Flip, flashers, strobes, underglow. But as you can see, my solenoids no longer fire. So again, if he's gonna do some nighttime gaming, you can still enjoy the lighting. That's always the best thing. Jackpot is lit for higher points. You could always do that, but again, if you want to do some nighttime gaming, you could just turn off the solenoids. Now, yes, you could do night mode on Pinscape. It's just, I don't deal with that software-wise. It's just so much easier to just wire in a switch and call it a day. 
As you can see, LED matrix flush against the glass. The TV screen, we went flush against the glass. What's my jackpot? Let's see. The jackpot is rising. <laughs> Again, the ball lock in this game is a thing of beauty. It's quite beautiful. Oh, and I got the jackpot. There you go. Awesome. Seven mil jackpot. I will, I will proudly take that. Thank you. Good. Ah. I'm gonna try to get this ball lock. Again, the nudging is a thing of beauty. If you would like, I could real quick danger, danger, and we tilt it. So again, it's a big deal. Now, also as far as the matrixes and all that, if you're not a, if you're not a fan, you could turn them off. So I have a separate switch to disable the addressable LED. So as you can see, it knocks out everything addressable. Basically, I knock out the five volt power supplies on that's connected to all the addressable LEDs. So that takes out the speaker panel, that takes out the side rails and the matrices. And again, the best thing, you can always just go ahead and just reactivate it. So if I just come here, I can flip the switch, everything is still there and I can reactivate my solenoid. So awesome stuff. Again, the solenoid is like the main switch. Your shaker will still go off, your beacon, well this one doesn't have beacon, but strobes, flashers, the whole nine yards, and again, 24 volt solenoids. Keep that in mind, not 12 volt, not car starters, 24 volt solenoids on this. It's a thing of beauty. It's awesome. Can't get it up, but I have to get my name on the billionaire's club. <laughs> Now, yes, real quick, I'll address something that you've probably seen in the overview video or even in the pictures. Vic, you left the energy guide yellow sticker on. What the hell are you doing? I leave that on purpose. This way it shows you that this TV is brand new. I even give the customers the original boxes, the original stands and all that. I just have this thing to make sure that people understand that these are, this is brand new stuff. Not stuff that I just kind of got at a lower discounted rate on. I don't want to deal with that. It is a brand new TV. He would have the pleasure of doing that great, satisfying feeling of pulling off the plastic. Uh, we'll probably do that together in person. Um, usually, again, even though Brad D is my friend and Chad is the brother, I treat everybody the same. We do the same process that I do with all my customers. I'll go full in depth. I'll even dismantle the cabinet. Basically, we'll start taking stuff apart in case you ever wanted to remove the TV screen and kind of maybe fix something or look at something underneath. You could do that. Why not? That's just how it is and everything. That's what's great. I don't really have anything hard bolted in. The TV could come out. The LED matrix panel comes out. Side rails have quick disconnects in and out. It is what it is and it's always good to always learn your stuff. So yes, I know, please. Don't worry, that energy guide is there to show everybody that it's a brand new screen and uh, I will give the customer satisfaction. Aside from also giving a little bit of protection in transit, um, usually whenever I have people that pick it up, um, even if I'm mailing these out, um, depending on how far it's going or how the cabinet is built, um, I would normally be putting the TV screen in the actual box that it came in. Um, it's just me. I just have that that thing. Although this has like the glass protecting it, um, Canada's I sent with the TV in place, so I wasn't too worried about that. But yes, I still have the original box and all that. It's just whatever customer prefers or me myself. Um, but yes, it's always good to learn your machine. And, and how things work underneath. <laughs> it's like I wanna play while I'm talking, but I feel bad I have my back to you. Again, pinball, I used to not be a fan of it, but now it, I feel like it's gotten a little bit cleaner. Basically though, I'll be, I'll be honest, I should rephrase that. I think what got better with pinball is number one, focus on, um, I, I, it's like I, I'm trying to talk to you and I feel bad because I'm not looking at it. Uh, it's always good to focus on the actual global, like, Windows volume. That's probably what you should do. If you're going to do pinball, set it up to, like, the actual Windows volume to go up and down. Then you have a separate shift to adjust the table volume. Um, it's, 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 it's great. I think it's great. And again, you got the shift key and you can lower it. I, in the past, I had it where you hold shift. And then I do still have it set for the table though, where you could shift and then do the flippers for the table volume. But for global volume, it's just so much easier to have one hand here and then start. So holding the blue is your extra ball, which is shift. Holding shift, and then you could either hold or press start. It will raise the volume. 
and then holding or pressing the coin button will lower the volume. It's just everything is right there. Whereas this right here, if I wanted to raise the volume, it's kind of me doing a dance. My left hand is on the shift, but then my right hand, I would be doing this to raise it. So you live and you learn. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with how that came out. Now again, looking at it in the dark, again, my camera like purple, it doesn't like flicker in person. The LEDs are not flickering, it's just that's how the camera is. But um, in the dark, it is a thing of beauty. I don't know if you could see the actual like detail on the Bride of Pinbot now, uh, but damn it, I forgot the nudge. It's, it's a thing of beauty, it looks great. Real quick, touching up on the Ryzen 7. This is my first ever Ryzen build. Um, very great. I was I had this thing about AMD years back that I would try to avoid AMD at all costs. But um, honestly, it's uh, it's I didn't nudge. It's gotten better. It's gotten better, and I'm definitely a fan of the Ryzen builds now. Um, virtual pinball though is not as high demanding as, for example, you know I don't know playing Call of Duty. Um, so I don't think I'm utilizing all the cores. Um, but I'm really happy to have this Ryzen 7 build and again a 4060 on it. Three screens, 4K 120 hertz on the play field, 32 inch back glass 1080p, 17 inch DMD. Uh, the DMD panel, again, I mentioned it before, it is a laptop screen. Um, I think the resolution on that is like 1920 by like, like a thousand, something like that. But yes, it is essentially a 1080p uh 17 inch dmd screen looks great i think it looks amazing and again i'm a big fan of doing the full 16 by 9 full dmds now real quick we take a look at the rear of the cabinet i did something that i never really done before i actually took because i had extra um channel from the addressable leds um i had extra channel i actually made an led channel for the rear panel here um pretty cool I think it's awesome. I also have it set up where it's like a quick kind of disconnect clip here. So in case you ever have to open up the back box, which in all honesty, Chad will have to do. The way my cabinets are built, I don't have a back box hinge. The back box right now is being held down currently with four screws. But when Chad brings it home, it's going to be eight screws in total right here that goes straight into the cabinet. This way it will never kind of fall over and such. So he will have to take the back panel off of the back box. Uh, but it's pretty cool, I never did this. On my personal cabinet build, I have like bare LEDs uh, because it's never gonna move. Um, I don't think for Project Canada, I don't think, um, I don't think I, I think I did actually. I may have added, usually what I do when it comes to the uh, RGB underbody glow, um, basically right here is like a connection and then you could just kind of continue up kind of like that with the single strand, the LEDs. I just wanted to try something a little bit different on this, this way in case it's like a quick disconnect. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Like I said, I have this little disconnect here and uh, you take this out, it's your standard LED clip and that's it. So once you're all said and done, and again, I built these right here, like this stuff, once you get it installed, like once you bring it home, mount the back box, close it, you should really never have to open any of this up ever again. <laughs> Everything is really software wise from that point on. So that is one thing to know. The last thing I want to make sure you could see it. Yeah, you can see it is the actual base of the cabinet here. I am no longer putting and closing up the panel here. Um, a couple of my past customers really uh, shout out to the guy with Star Trek. Um, you know, he was kind of concerned about um, is there enough circulation and is there enough heat disbursement stuff going on? Honestly, Keeping this bare wide open, right where the PC is, I think it's the best way to go about. Um, Project Canada, even on Star Trek, I basically put, I made the panel, I even put artwork on the panel for it, and um, I kind of said, listen, you have the, if you want to close it, you have your panel. Me, Percy, like on my build, I have it wide open, as you can see here, it just gives more ventilation. And I keep it basic, there is three air intake. This air is always being pulled in. I don't really have air pushing out because honestly, it's probably coming out of here. Air and heat do rise. So for example, here, that's why I have the three openings here because your screens and such here. You know, honestly, here for the back box, wiring wise, um, I do have a Molex connector. That's how it is. It's all via connected Molex. Um, so in all honesty, when you take the back box off, 
It's a Molex connector. We have two HDMIs and then two power. So five like connectors basically are in this area here. Now real quick talking about the PC. The PC is the PC. You kind of want to make sure like your ports are like accessible and such. Uh, what's really great and cool, I'm not going to do it now because the cabinet's on. I actually have the PC mounted on its own separate shelf. So this shelf right here, once you kind of disconnect stuff and I have everything labeled. So I have here like back box, uh, I should say back glass. I have this one here that's labeled D and D. Everything is labeled cleanly and all that. So it is designed where in a way, I don't know if something happens to the PC, you could always slide the shelf out and then work on the PC there. So it's pretty cool. I kind of like the design on that. Um, as far as the graphics card, as you can see how the PC is, it's open air. There's no actual case for the PC. I went and I custom kind of drilled the graphics card with a piece of wood so the graphics card doesn't move in transit. But anytime I ship my cabinets out, I always remove the graphics card. The graphics card goes back in the box. The customer will put the graphics card in themselves. It's a big deal because it's in transit, stuff bounces around. And I think it's kind of silly and stupid, especially with how I have it. If you want me to get an open air kind of PC mount, I could do that, but they're like 80 bucks. Might as well buy a regular PC case for 80 bucks. But again, whenever it's in transit, graphics card is always taken out. Why risk? I don't know how to install one, Vic. I could do it on a video call. It's very simple. <laughs> it's very easy to install a graphics card. But yes, this is what the rear looks like. Again, here's your two switches. So the top one is always the addressables. The bottom one is always the solenoids. And again, if you have anything custom made, if you want me to custom make a switch for something else, I can always do that. Inside the cabinet on the left side here is the dial for the shaker motor. On the right side, I do have the volume knob for my Z533. That's the audio and the subwoofer. Uh, what else do I have? And then on the top here, I have the two amps for the surround sound force feedback. In all honesty, I always tell my customers this right here, once you set it, you forget it because everything else is managed in the front. Now, real quick, I want to make sure you can see it because I have it in the dark. Again, like I said, I have my flashers and strobes and such, but there's also in the back box here because Chad could not fit beacons. I'm going to aim this at the ceiling. And of course it ended. Uh, in the back box, in the rear right here, and I'll probably snap a picture of it, I actually have strobes and the RGB flashers up top here. So it is a thing of beauty when you could see it. Right now, and you see the flickering obviously because of the purple, um, that right now is the LEDs in the rear of the back box. But if I play, you'll most likely start to see kind of, as you can see right there, the strobe went off and the R went off. There you go, you can see a little bit of the blue, you can see the red, awesome, awesome stuff. And again, I do have that as well underneath the cabinet, the base of the cabinet. So in the base, you can see there I have strobes, uh, again, it's kind of hard because you have the purple, but you have strobes and I do have the RGBs underneath. So it's pretty cool depending on how and such it goes along with the cabinet. There is a lot of lighting and honestly lighting is a pretty big deal. And it's a thing of beauty. There you go. You can see the G, you can see the greens. Awesome. Now real quick to show off the actual flasher that I got. Look at this. Came in RGB. It does come in a pack of 12. Um, in all honesty, every cabinet usually has about three to four RGBs. So usually about 10 to 12 um, lights. But look at that. There you go. That is blue. That's the B. So very simple. 12 volts. It's a car. Like I said, it's for cars. It's got your basic standard, you know, positive and negative. And again, it's 12 volts. So that's it. Basically, if you think about it at the bottom, like for example, here on the cabinet here, I have uh, two strobes. R, G, B, uh, and then another strobe. It's kind of mapped out there, but basically like the B's are all like line, in line together. So I kind of wire them up. But the big and awesome thing is, yes, I do have in this panel up above the back box. Although Chad couldn't fit a beacon, he still at least has some LEDs that interact. So again, R, G, B, and strobes up top. I feel like I kind of talked about everything that I can. Um, as far as Chad, when he was kind of reaching out to builders, um, I don't know, I, 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 I basically just gave the regular spiel. This is what I could offer. I think the big selling point was having a full DOF setup. Um, you know, solenoids, the strobes, the underbody, the RGB flippers and all that. 
Um, I think that was the big selling point going with me. Um, again, I have a, I get a lot of requests, especially like I said before, TikTok blows up, and you know people ask me like, what's your price range on this? Uh, these get pricey. Uh, these are not cheap. I don't build cheap. If you want cheap, you go and get an at games and you deal with that. Um, it is what it is. I'm not gonna downplay it. Uh, I'm not cheap. And again, you gotta keep in mind that the cost, the hardware cost alone, the cost to just get to this point here, uh, it's 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 there. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not gonna sugar. This right here, you were looking at a five-figure machine. Yes, this is a five-figure cabinet. I am proud to say that because just look at it. All the stuff that's going on inside of it, it is what it is. Now what's also great, I'm gonna this is kind of a cool segue, because what I have behind me is somebody from Illinois that purchased the Cleveland Design Kit. Basically stuff to bring your cabinet to life, the force feedback, the solenoids. I have to make a separate video on that. You'll stay tuned with that for the Illinois build. Uh, I got my buddy Joel, Retro Lizard. I think he's dabbling into that. Um, I don't know, I cannot speak on it. I really can't because I haven't really dug deep into it. I'm really anxious for this cabinet to go out because then this gets pulled and I'm actually making a whole custom back box for this build. This build originally had a DMD panel in it, like a pin to DMD, an actual dot matrix. And th this customer wants a full DMD 16 by nine. So with that, I told him, I gotta make a whole new back box because Vic, whatever you could do, let's do it. This had the whole Cleveland design kit in it. I dismantled it. It's all there. I had to like label everything. Just by a quick glance, and again, I'm not sure, I'm not trying to disrespect, but the Cleveland Design Kit is expensive. It's not cheap. It is expensive. Uh, it's plug and play. That's what people love to hear. But in all honesty, I'm, uh, I have to modify it because I don't like the layout of it. And again, it's not disrespectful to Cleveland. He could probably make a separate kit, but you know, watching, and it's funny, we talk about Mr. JNet. If you don't know who Mr. JNet, he's got a Bible. We call it the Bible. The Bible on how to build a virtual pinball machine. You could go look at the Bible. He's got kind of a way that the solenoid should be set out. I followed his guide. What am I getting at? I have three solenoids here. Three solenoids here, and then you have the three in the middle. I actually have, I think it's a, and then two in the center for the slingshot. There's a way to... There's a way to put the solenoids. When I was testing this Illinois one, the placement, it throws you off. Cause it's kind of like, why did I spend money on 10 solenoids when a solenoid, I hope you can see me. A solenoid is here. Let's just say that's the left front. And then the left rear is like right next to it. You don't feel a difference. So it's like, why did you waste your money? Whereas how I build mine, you could, you could be like, oh shit. I hear that when the, the rear pops are going off, I could hear it in the rear. It's it's a different thing. Um, what am I getting at? Uh, in all honesty, the, 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 I think Cleveland Designs kit, if you get the works, and I could be wrong, it's just I'm, I'm still kind of confused on how he, you're over like a grand. And um, my biggest gripe is that it's the 12 volt car starters. For that grand, I could put 24 volt solenoids. Is it a big difference to me? It's a monster difference. It's huge. And what's also crazy and it's also great, um, Chad or Brad, they had an Ag Games virtual pinball machine and they put the 12 volt car starters in theirs. I think it was the same thing, a Cleveland design kit. I'm really anxious and excited when Chad walks up to this and he's gonna be like, holy shit. What the fuck is going on? Like, I feel like he's gonna feel the difference. Yes, voltage matters, it all changes. Um, again though, shout out to Cleveland, he's making stuff and I give him big props. He's he's definitely getting a lot of people uh, and it's getting pretty cool. Um, I just have a couple of tips, that's it. If you wanna use them, that's very cool. I have to now kind of, re I really have to reach out to him still because the idea is he, he has an LED matrix but, and it's like what other builders do and it pisses me the fuck off. 
um, you know, you have this big, imagine like I have this, but like my LED matrix is this. There's so much like empty space. It's like, why? It sucks. So I have to now reach out to Cleveland to figure out how to extend it. Not to mention, I have to go from right rail to speaker. I have to find out like how he has his stuff programmed. Um, but I'll figure it out. I'll knock it out. Don't worry. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Um, also a little thing for myself. I give my, myself a big pat on the back because I love it. Um, you can see my matrix panel again, just like all my other builds, it is a piece of plexiglass. And I actually I forgot to mention this right here is my build. This is the first time ever I actually use it. I used window tint. I used window tint on the speaker panel and the led matrix. This way it's like, it's, I usually, I used to spray paint it black. Uh, cause I don't like to see bare LEDs. I hate it. And, uh, using the tint, pretty good. I'm not going to lie though. It was a little tough to lay. Um, cause it came in a roll and, uh, I probably had to air it out longer, but honestly, that is probably the biggest thing with my builds that I love. I'll, I'll move you in close. You don't even see. That's the biggest thing. I hate bare LEDs. You don't even see it. Look, look. let me turn the lights off. Hold on. No, actually I'm, I'm not going to turn the lights off. I'm going to keep the lights on. I just, I have to, like I said, I have like this, it's probably this if I, I'm just blinded myself. <laughs> you can see here, right here. You don't even know that there's a matrix here. You don't even see the LED rail. I love it. You don't even see here. You're like, there's LEDs behind this? Yes, if I put some coins in, let's answer some coins. Let's start up the game. And there you go. Like you now could see LEDs. You didn't even know it was there. Let's take a look at the matrixes real quick. So you can see that, that I love that. That is probably the biggest thing. And again, just taking that little extra second while well, I get my nudging, taking that little extra step, I should say, not second, that extra step to adding the LED here, the, the, the tint, it changes the game. And again, I've mentioned it many times, if you're doing virtual pinball, you know, if you didn't have the toys going off, it, it, it changes your, opinion and your view on virtual pinball if you didn't have these lights i'm not saying you need lights but it's just like a real pinball machine like my machine that says like my godfather Ooh, i love my godfather you just like once you see flashing and you see and you hear knockers and you, you're like holy shit you just know like you're, whatever you're doing you're doing good it changes your like it changes the game it's 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 a thing that you really need so it's always kind of tough. Like I said, I get a lot of the clients I get, a lot of customers, they're like, oh man, you know, I tried out like this RK one up and I didn't like it. And then I give them a price of this and they're like, whoa, that's expensive for something that I didn't like. And I'm like, mm, don't compare me or a full build to like an arcade one up. Cause it, no, <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but it's not the same. <laughs> I get it. Now also again, we're talking about like, I'm basically just talking about like costs and all that. Again, shout out Cleveland Design. He's making a kit that it's gonna bring your virtual pinball machine to life. It's great. Glass, this does have glass on it. Glass costs money. Again, Eric, Big E Productions, metal. Metal work costs money. Um, things cost money. <laughs> so, you know, again, if you're gonna build it yourself, you gotta calculate a couple of things. It's very difficult for people to understand that the PC, PC is important. And the PC in this, I don't skimp out on parts. Like I don't, I don't do that. I'm not, I'm just, I, I, some people might say it's overkill. Vic, you went overkill on the PC. And I'm like, no, I didn't. Cause this PC is set for life. Like you, you're talking like 20 years down the road, 15 years down the road where you might have to upgrade the, the, the graphics card. That's what it is. But people just don't understand that the PC part alone, I mean, you're looking at like, I don't know, 800 to about 900 bucks. What? No, Vic, why? You're lying. Okay, whatever. Go do that shit yourself. Like, go calculate it. That's like the worst. And then now I see people and it makes me laugh and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but like somebody's like, look what I did and I got this working on a Steam Deck. What? <laughs> You're gonna compare this to a Steam Deck? And I get it, it's fine, you have the ad games and you can plug it in, you can do that, whatever the fucking mode it, I, it's fine, you could at least experience virtual pinball, but if you're gonna sit there and go like, you don't have to spend so much money, you can just get a Steam Deck to run virtual pinball. 
Do you? <laughs> Well, there you have it, the full force, full detail that talked your ear off about the machine. Bride of Pinbot Virtual Pinball Machine, 42 inch build. So again, we have the 42 inch C3 LG OLED on this 32 inch back glass, 17 inch DMD. What a thing of beauty. I am very excited for Chad to not only pick up his machine, but to enjoy it. Shout out to Chad. I appreciate you selecting me to build your virtual pinball machine. I hope you got a lot of enjoyment out of it. Brad D owns three real pinball machines, uh, two of which are Playboys. Chad, once you get everything dialed in, you could have your own Playboys. <laughs> On that note, Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. Another beautiful build in the books. <laughs>